Good day, students. I am Mr. Triumph Edu, your lecturer in this very course, Basic Information Technology Skills, BIS 132. I'll be taking you to these video classes on word processing software. Basically, we're going to learn the applications of word processing. First, what are word processing? Web processing are softwares or packages that are that can be used to create documents, edit the document, format the document, save the document, and print out the document. There are different types of word processing softwares. We have Microsoft Word. We have PageMaker. We have WordPerfect. We have WordStar. And so many other word processing software. But our focus is going to be on Microsoft Word. So we are going to use Microsoft Word here. We have Microsoft Word 2003. We equally have Microsoft Word 2007. What are some of the things that you can do or some of the tasks that can be performed using Microsoft Word? With Microsoft Word, you can type letters. You can type memos. You can type projects, assignments, edit them, format them, save them, and print them using Microsoft Word. And do you know what? Microsoft Word is user-friendly. That is, you can learn how to use Microsoft Word easily. So I'm going to take you throughout, through this course, explain to you some of the skills that are needed on your part for you to use Microsoft Word. For you to use Microsoft Word, now, get your computer ready. Boot it. Let it be on. Now, let us start. To start using Microsoft Word, you click on the Start button. Just as I have done it now, then you move on to All Programs. From the list of programs displayed, look for Office, Microsoft Office. The Microsoft Office is an integrated package. That is, it contains so many packages like Microsoft Web, Microsoft Publisher, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft InfoPath, Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Access. All these softwares, they can be found in Microsoft Office. Each of them has its own specific function or usage. But for now, we're going to concentrate or have a look at how to use Microsoft Word effectively in creating documents. The first step is to create your document, that is type in your document. Secondly, you edit your document, that is to correct errors, mistakes that must have been seen in the document. Then the third point is to format your document. To format means to add some features to the document. 
then you save your document finally you print your document let us start now by clicking on Microsoft Word 2007 here we are Microsoft Word 2007 probably you are familiar with Microsoft Word 2003 don't get worried they perform the same work just that they have different features but for the purpose of this class our attention will be focused on Microsoft 2007 just like Microsoft Word 2003 Microsoft Word 2007 has bars. First, we're going to look at the title bar. That is where I'm pointing to now. This place is called the title bar. Title. You know what the title is? Just like say, Dr. Barrister. Now, the title bar, it displays the name of a document and the name of the application that you are working on. If the document is yet to be given a name, Microsoft Word automatically gives it document 1. If you open another document, it gives it document 2. Here we have document 1 because I'm here to give it a name, as you can see. Then what you have in front is Microsoft Word, just to show that this document one is created in Microsoft Word. If you come to Microsoft Excel, you will see it as document one, Microsoft Excel, document one, Microsoft Access. But here, the point I want you to get is the title bar displays the name of the documents. Now to assign the document a name, what do you do? You click on the home button here, the office button. Then you see save as, save as. Now, save as point out to various options, drop out various options. That is, you can save it in Word document. If you save it here, it can open in Microsoft 2003, 2007, or any other one. If I save it in Word template, it's going to take it as a template. If I save it in Word 97 to 2003, it's going to be saved in the format of Microsoft Word 97 to 2003. Have a look at the picture here of Microsoft Word 2003. It's quite different from that of 2007. So better to save in Word document. So you can open your document in any of the Microsoft Word office. So I click on it. A dialog box comes out. Here you move to file name. Microsoft Word will automatically suggest a name for you, a file name. You might accept it, you might not. It is better to give it your name. Go to your keyboard, use a backspace key to remove the name suggested by Microsoft Word and type in a name of a file of your choice. Take for an instance, I want to save this document with IUM. So I go to my keyboard, then I type IUM. And I'm done. I click on save. Go back now to your title bar. What can you see? IUM 
Microsoft Word. That confirms that this is the title bar. We have another bar I'm going to explain to you which is called the menu bar. In the menu bar, you have Home, Insert, Page Layout, References, Mailings, Review, and View. Each of these menus contains commands that you make use of in editing your document. If, for instance, I click on Insert, you see different document. I mean commands on the insert menu that you use in editing or formatting your document. Same goes to page layout. Next, I'm going to explain to you how to use a ruler in your document. We go to view menu rather. From view menu, you select ruler. Look at it. When I got to view menu, it was not check. It was on check. Now, when I check it, the ruler is out. Can you have a look at my ruler here? Okay. This is what I mean by the ruler. If I uncheck it, it goes off. If I check it again, it comes back. So the ruler menu command will guide me while typing my document. That is, if I start typing now, for instance, saying this is, you can see that the document start typing right from where the ruler is here and from here, as you can see which can be adjusted the same thing goes to the side apart from that i will equally show you the scroll bars here we have the scroll bars that is you use the scroll bar in moving your document up and down just as i'm doing it now Okay, you can scroll, okay, I click on the scroll buttons, you can scroll down, okay, you can scroll up, same thing, you can scroll left and right. Apart from that, we are going to look at uh, another bar. Remember, I have shown you the title bar. Now we're going to look at the bottom here, which is called the status bar, the status bar. It gives you or shows the status of your document. Here I have page one of one. That is, presently, I have just one page in my document here called IUM. Here, words, two. I have just two words. If I type more, this is a good day. Check your status bar. What do you see there? Word five. If I'm done, let's assume I'm done with this page I move to the next page look at your status bar what do you find there page 2 of 2 which means this document has how many pages now 2 pages and presently I am on page 2 of 2 so if I have 10 pages and I'm working on page 3 it's going to be page 3 of 10 which means I have 10 pages but I am working on page 3 next let me teach you 
how to close a document. Assume you are done with your work on IUM document and you want to close it. You move to the office button, click on it, under it you see the close command. Close command. Then you click on close. Microsoft Word asks you a question. Do you want to save changes made to IUM? It's only going to ask you this question if there are some changes you have made but are yet to be saved. But if there is none, this question is not going to come out. But if there are some changes you have made to that document that are yet to be saved, then it asks you, do you want to save changes made to IUM? If you want to, click yes. If you don't want, click no. If you want to save, click yes. Then those changes I've made will be saved. If I click no, those changes will not be saved. If you want to cancel this operation, probably you don't want to close the document again. What do you do? Click cancel. So cancel, we close, we cancel this operation. That is the document will not be closed. If you want to save the changes, click yes. If no, click no. Here, I want to save the changes. So what do I do? I click yes. What can you see? Look at your title bar. All what you see now is Microsoft Word. That is, IUM document in Microsoft Word is closed. But, Microsoft Word is still on. So for Microsoft Word to be off, for you to get out of Microsoft Word environment, you exit. So there is a difference between close and exit. How do I exit now? Go back again to your office button. Then you come to exit Word. What can you see? Microsoft Word is off. Now let us see how can you open the document that you have saved. Remember, the document we saved has a name. The name is IUM Microsoft Word. I want us to open the document now. You take your mouse to the office button, you click. Among the commands here, you can see open. You click on it. Or you use the shortcut. There are times you can make use of shortcuts in your operation. If you look at the open command, command you can see Ctrl O in front of it, which means from your keyboard you can press Ctrl and O. So let us click on open now. Here we are. This is the open dialog box. All names of documents saved in this place will be displayed. Here I have just one IUM. You click on it, then you say open. What can you see? This is exactly where we stop with these documents. This was the last thing we typed. So that is how to open a document that has been saved. Let us look at our keyboard now to type just a sentence here or just a phrase. Let's say we want to type, my God is good. Just go to M. 
Why? After that, what do you do? You press the space bar key. The longest key on the keyboard is the space bar key. My God, remember, I want G to be in capital letter. So look at your keyboard. There is a key called the shift key. The shift key. You hold down the shift key while you type on that alphabet. It gives you capital G. Without holding down the shift key, if I press G, it gives me a small letter G. So, for me to get capital letter G, I hold down the shift key and type G. O D space. Remember, God is good. Where can you get your full stop for? Look at your keyboard. You will see a dot there that is the full stop. Let me just explain to you that if you look at your keyboard, there are some keys that are dual function. That is, they have uh, two characters on them. Look at where you type your full stop from. On top of it, you will see the greater than sign, which means that key can be used to type full stop, it can be used to type greater than sign. If you look at again your keyboard, slash and question mark. So what can you do if you are in need of the upper character? We we'll call those ones down lower characters. We we'll call the ones up upper characters. Take for instance, I want to use the greater than sign. I must hold down the shift key and that key. Then it gives me what? Greater than. If I want the less than sign, I hold down the shift key and that key, it gives me less than sign. Without holding down the shift key, if I press that key, it gives me the lower character, as you can see. Look at your keyboard again. Look at where you have the plus and equal sign. Guess what? If I press the key, what is it going to give me? My guess you get the answer right. Let's see if you get the answer right. Okay, press it now. What did you see? Upper character or lower character? Lower character, right. So if you want plus now, what are you going to do? Do it now, before I do it for you. Have you done it? Did you get it right? Possibly, yes. And you give yourself a clap. If not, Look at me. I go back to the shift key. Then I press the key. It gives me what? Plus sign. So typing on the keyboard is a very simple task that you can do. Let's have a look at this again. Let's assume I want to type everything in capital letter. Then what must I do? Very easy. There's no need of holding down the shift key for a long time. What you simply need to do is set your keyboard on capital letter form. Here I am. When you press the capital letter form, if you look at your keyboard, and depending on the type of keyboard you are using, at the left side of your keyboard there's a place written there caps lock caps lock the green light shows caps lock the green light shows it means the keyboard is on a caps letter form here I am. let me type my god is good here i did not hold down the shift key because why 
the keyboard is already set in capital letter form. We are done. Press it again, just once. Off it goes from capital letter form. If I type anything now, it comes out in small letters because I have switched off the keyboard from capital letter form. You now agree with me that it is so simple, very easy to type using a computer. When you type in Microsoft Word, as you type along, let's assume I continue typing along like this, my, that my, okay, God is good. He takes care of me. He provides for me. What can you observe? You can see the cursor. This black thing here that blinks. This black thing that blinks is called the cursor. It writes. You find that when the cursor writes, it moves to the end of the line automatically it jumps to the next line it writes when it gets to the end of the line it automatically moves to the next line in microsoft word we call that word wrapping word wrapping so it's going to be you just type it when it gets to the end of the line the cursor moves to the next line but at the end of a paragraph, let's assume this is my paragraph, the end of my first paragraph, then I must move the cursor to the next line on my own. How are you going to do that? Look at your keyboard. There is a key there called Enter Key. Enter Key. E-N-T-E-R. Enter. If you press the Enter Key, the cursor moves to the next line to start a new paragraph. In the course of this class, I will explain to you how to set your paragraphs later. Let us now look at how to delete or erase character. Remember, we are human beings. We are not perfect. Hence, when we type, we can make errors. We can make mistakes. So when there are errors, when there are mistakes, and you want to erase, how do you go about it? I'm going to show you the functions of two vital keys here. One, the backspace key. The back space key and the delete key let us assume my cursor is here between is and good my cursor is between is and good let me make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it clearly Fine. Don't worry about how I make it bigger. I'm going to teach you more about that. My cursor is between is and good. And I want to erase that letter S. What must I do? You use the backspace key. Let us press the backspace key now. S is gone. So the backspace key erase a character at the back of the cursor. The backspace key erase a character at the back of a cursor. Why the delete key erase a character in front of a cursor? Let us press the delete key now. What happens? 
Press it again. G is off. Press it again. O is off. Press it again. O is off. Press it again. D is off. So, the delete key erase a character in front of the cursor. Why the backspace key erase a character at the back of the cursor? I press the backspace key again. I is erased. I want to erase D now. Press it again until it gets there. It erase G. Next, I'm going to teach you or explain to you how to perform these following operations. That is, to bold your document or to bold a text, to underline and italics. Before any feature can be added to a text, before any feature can be added to a text, that is before you can bold, you can underline, you can make it capital letters, change it from small letters to capital letters automatically, before you can use interlays, those texts must be highlighted. They must be selected. Why? It's just to tell Microsoft Word, please, I want to apply the following features to this area. That is the purpose of highlighting. Just like you have five children at home, you want one of them to get you a cup of water. You can't just say, children, get me what? Who will go for you? Nobody. Where you say, oh, John, get me water. Then John knows you are talking to him. So you have to highlight the function, the area where that command is to be applied. Now I want to bold God. What must I do? I highlight. How do I highlight now? Let me teach you the various ways you can highlight. One, move your cursor to the beginning of where there is God. Hold down the left button of your mouse. The move across. It means God is highlighted. I have told Microsoft Word here that any command I select, any operations I perform, will be applied to only God now. Not the entire document now. Just God. Because God is highlighted. So you can highlight with your mouse or click the beginning of the text to be highlighted. Hold down the shift key. Then your arrow keys. The arrow keys are four. You have the up arrow key, the down arrow key, the left arrow key, and the right arrow keys. So I can highlight this way. Here I've highlighted God is good down to the full stop. I can take it back. If I want to highlight down then shift and the down arrow key. So I have highlighted God. I want to bold it now. You can look at where you have your home menu. Remember the menu bar? It contains different commands. But here I'm interested in bold. That is the B you can see here. So what do I do? I click. Have a look at this. Can you see that God is bold now? Black compared to others. You can remove the boldness. If you don't want it again, you can unbold it, highlight it, go back, click on it again, it goes. Or you can do it this way. Let's assume I want to bold everything here. You can highlight all. Okay. Then. 
Microsoft Word 2007 provides you with this following short way of doing it. You can click on bold here. Everything is bold here. Why? Why? It is because I highlighted everything. That is why everything is bold. Let us see underline. Underline. Remember, for any fixture to be added, you must do what? You must highlight or select. If I want to highlight good, what do I do? Only good. Then come back to where now? Underline. Because it is only good that was highlighted. If I want to underline my highlight it, then you can say underline. Same way. If you want to remove it, you can go back to it again. It goes off. You can come back here. It's off. So you can underline your work. But first, before you underline, highlight. The next is italics. Italics makes it a little bit bent, slight, a little bit bent. Have a look. I highlight. Here I have italics here. I click on it. What can you see? A little bit bent, I guess. Yeah. I click on it again, it's off. Can you see? So that is italics. And I'm sure you can practice these few things on your computer in Microsoft Word. We are going to have a look again at something else in Microsoft Word now. We're going to look now on uh, what is called copy and paste. Copy and paste. When you copy a text, it's a command that makes you to create extra copies from the original one to create extra copies to make more copies from the original typed one I have typed my God is good I want another my God is good into five places there's no need of me typing it again I can copy the original one and paste how don't forget, before you perform any operation, what must you do first? Highlight or select. So if I'm going to copy everything here, I highlight everything. You can look at your home menu here. Here you see the copy command. Can you see it display the shortcut? Control C. Control C in brackets. Control C in what? Brackets. That is, you can perform the operation from your keyboard. Your keyboard has a key called Control C, T, R, L, and C. Just press it. It's the same thing as clicking Copy. Please note, do not press plus. The plus there just shows you that it is control and C. It's not for you to press control plus and C. No, just control and what? C as a shortcut. But here I'm going to click here, I say copy. So 
Microsoft Excel have duplicated my God is good. Now move your cursor to where you want the copy pasted. Move your cursor to where you want the copy pasted. Go back now. You see paste. Guess what is the shortcut there? Can you have a look at it? In brackets, control what? Control V. So if I press control V from my keyboard, it pastes what I have copied. Or I click on paste. What can you see? My God is good. Can you observe something here? The full stop is not pasted. Why? It was not selected. It was not highlighted. That is why the full stop is not pasted. Now, I want another copy again. I go back again. I say, paste. So I can continue to do what? To paste as many as I want. Because I have copied. So the copy command duplicate the original one. The paste command position the duplicated one in another place. Next, we're going to look at cuts and paste. C U T. Cuts. C U T. The cuts command is used to transfer, is used to transfer a text or an object from one position to another position. So you use the cut command to transfer. Then you use the paste command to reposition it. Let's take for instance. I want to transfer the first line from here. Remember, what am I doing? I have to highlight first. Don't always forget that. I've highlighted. I have told Microsoft Word I'm going to perform an operation on this. Go back here to home. Can you see a cut command? Try the shortcut yourself now. Try the shortcuts. What is the shortcut? Can you see there? Ctrl X. Fine. You see, shortcut saves your time. If you are given a work by your boss as a secretary, shortcut saves your time. Imagine. You just say Ctrl X, Ctrl V, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Just very fast. I guess you are preparing to attend an interview and you are giving a document to type. If you use shortcuts, definitely you beat the other people who come for the interview. So learn how to use shortcuts. It makes your work, your operation faster than clicking. So I say cut now. What happened? Oh, it's gone. The first line is gone. Microsoft will have taken it from that position. Now, I move to where I want it to be. Move your cursor to wherever you want it to be. Position again. You come back to where? To paste. And do what? And paste. Here it comes. So, cut is used to take it from a position then paste will reposition it. Go on to your computer and practice what I have just said now. Very easy to do. But as I said, learn how to use the shortcut. Again, if you are working on Microsoft Word 2003, you can find the cut, copy and paste command under edit menu. 
here in Microsoft 2007, there's no edit menu, but if you are working on Microsoft Word 2003, you are going to find the cut, copy, and paste command under edit menu. How can you check spellings error in your documents? When working on Microsoft Word, when you type, there can be some spellings error. Look at this. I'm typing. I want to type, my God is good. I'm going to make some errors here. Intentionally. Have a look at it. Okay, what can you see? The next word there, G-U-D, is underlined red. The second one is underlined green. If you see a word, underlined red, it means the computer dictionary. The computer dictionary does not recognize that word. That is why it is underlined red. It means the computer dictionary does not recognize that word. The default dictionary. Because this software, this application software you making use of is written along with a dictionary. Presently, it uses the the US English, the American English. You have the British English, you have the American English. So it's going to check your document in accordance with the American English. Look at this. I type this word. Color. Is underlining it right? But I know it's right. Why is it underlined red? This is British English. But let me type it in American English. What happened? Not underlined red. Can you see what I mean now? So the default dictionary there is the, is, is the American English. Probably, yes. The software is written, uh, Microsoft Word is from America. A big, big gate. So it is written in American English. Now, the other one here, green, it means the grammar is wrong. It means you have violated the English rules and regulation of grammars. So when you make grammatical errors, when you make grammatical errors, if your tenses are wrong, then it underlines it green. Take for an instance, if I say in the English language, oh, I want to went. <laughs> I'm wrong. Yeah, I want to went. The tenses there is wrong. Went. So if you type things like that, it's going to underline it green. Not that your spelling is wrong, but the grammar is wrong. But here, why is it underlined green? Good is right. It's because the full stop here is not in the right position. The full stop should be immediately after the last character, D. Here, the spelling is wrong. So how do you check your spelling's error? I want to emphasize this to you, students. Before you print any document, before you print any document, always check spellings errors and grammatical errors. Before you print any document, I repeat, always check spellings errors and grammatical errors. Remember, it's saying 
if you rush, you crash. Of what use it is for you, as a secretary, to type a document of 10 pages, then you print without checking the spellings errors, you give to your boss, and the document is condemned. You have wasted your time, you have wasted your boss time, you have wasted ink, materials, you have wasted papers, and it can cost the organization some good amount of money. If it's a proposal, your proposal can be rejected because of spelling errors and grammatical errors. So how do you check now? To correct this word, right click on it. You can see Microsoft Word has brought out suggested words that are similar to the word you type. So look for the correct word and click on it. Here is God. So I can click God. It corrected. That is how to correct like this too. Okay, good. Okay, you see it now. I say good. It corrects it. But let's have a look at this very one here, Colo. I know it is right. I know it's right. Okay. If you want to accept the American suggestion, you can. But if not, what do you say? Ignore. When you say ignore, what you are saying is leave it the way it is. Please, computer, leave it the way it is. If you type it again, it will come, the problem will come up again. If you type color again, it will underline it red again. So to avoid such problems, if you know you are going to type color more than once in this document, just say ignore all. Ignore all. So ignore all means anywhere there is that same type of mistake or that same type of error. Please, computer, leave it the way it is for me. That is, ignore all. But if you say ignore, if it comes across it again, it brings the same problem. Then you can say ignore. So, that is how to check your errors. Look at this. The green line is there. It's because... The space between color, these two words here, is too much. That is why it is underlined green. So, right click on it, come back here, and correct it. Remember, as you are working on your documents, correcting mistakes, editing it, always remember to save what you are doing. The first time you save here, when you use IUM, you only gave the document a name. Now, to be saving all these changes, all these corrections, all this editing you are doing on the document, you have to save them. Go back to Office button, then you click Save. Not Save As, again, Save As is only used in giving it a name while save is used in saving changes that are made to a document either you delete you remove you amend you do anything to the document always save alternatively from your keyboard press control s control s as a shortcut as you can see so as you work on your document correcting errors correcting mistakes underlining bold italics whatever you are doing always save your document periodically before I move to the next step remember I said 
you must spell check your document before you do what? You print. Before you print the document. The next thing I'm going to teach you in Microsoft Word is find and replace. Take for an instance. You type a document, you are working with a newspaper organization, you type a document, and the document says, the name of my country is Namibia. I love Namibia. A country with good people. Okay. Then your boss says, Oh, there is a problem here. That country is not Namibia. That country is not Namibia. That country should be Kenya. Oh, that country should be Zambia. And you have typed a document where Namibia appears over 1,000 times. How do you change that name Namibia to the new one? Irrespective of the number of times it has appeared. So, you use find command. Find command under home. Under home, you see find. So find, we click on it. What are we going to find now? We are going to find Nami Beer. Now, replace. Click on what now? Replace. Replace with what? South Africa? Okay, you want to replace it with what now? South Africa. Then you click on it here. Replace all. Microsoft Word will tell you Word has completed its search of the document and has made two replacements. That is, here I only have, I only type Namibia twice. That is why it says two replacements. If it has made 1,000 replacements, it will tell you 1,000 replacements. When you are done with that, say OK. Then you can close. Scroll up. Remember, this is our scroll button to see what is on top. Let's look at it. The name of my country is South Africa. I love South Africa. So the find and replace command is used to find a particular word or phrase and replace it with another one. So if you type a document today with Vinduk, if you type a document with Vinduk, okay. Okay, I want Vinduk here maybe five times. Remember what am I going to do? Remember your copy, okay? Can you remember? Copy, write, and paste, and paste, and paste. I want to replace Vinduk. Highlight, find Vinduk. Okay, click on replace. Okay. Replace with London. Replace all. Word has finished session the selection. Eight replacement were made. Do you want to search remaining remaining remainder of the document? If yes, click yes. If no, click no. Okay, then close. What happened? Any place where there was Vinduk, okay, 
All these areas were what? Vinduk, Vinduk, Vinduk. But has been replaced with what now? London, 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 London. Just get the command from under home, find, replace. You can use the shortcut, which is Ctrl F for find and Ctrl H for replace. Then, let us look at font size. Font size. You might say, oh, this thing is too small. Can I make it bigger than this? Fine. You can make it bigger. My God is good. Can be bigger than this. First, highlights. Okay. Come to where you have the home command, the home menu under it. You can see the font size box. Here you have 16. It means what I type here, the size is 16. You can click on this button and select a bigger site. Can you see what is happening? Increasing. The more I move, this is 72 size, 48, 36, 28. So if I say 28, the size is 28. Can you highlight London and make it size 30 for me? Okay, highlight. Fine. You can do it from here too. Okay? So telling me what size is London, 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 London here. Size 16. I can make it bigger, as you can see. Okay? If I want 48, I click 48. You can make it smaller. Look at size 8. Can you see? That is size 8. You can type the size there yourself. This is 12. I can decide to type 19. You can type in there yourself. You can type the size there yourself. Can you see? I type all there, size 19. Press enter key. So if the number you, you want to use is not here, probably. Oh, 20 is too big for me. 18 is too small. Then you can use 19. But 19 is not here. So what must you do? Come here and type it. I want to use 13. It's not here. Oh, what must I do? Come here and do what? Type 13. Then it gives you that. So you can make your words bigger. You can make it smaller. Let us look at also orientation, orientation of your paper. You can set your orientation to landscape, you can set it to portrait. Have a look. Orientation, you have to come to page layout menu most of the time i have been bringing commands under the home menu but now i'm moving to page layout menu page layout menu there you can find orientation open it I have portrait can you have a look at portrait this is how the document will be printed out then have a look at landscape landscape is wide white portrait is kind of tall landscape is wide let me choose landscape can you see the document here how landscape is let me change it back to portrait can you see so it's your choice depend on the document to be printed or to be prepared to show if you're going to use a landscape or you're going to use a portrait. The picture here shows you how portrait looks like 
and uh, how landscape look like. I'm going to teach you something else again. Have a look at your newspaper. Can you see the way your newspaper is being written? There are columns. Fine. How can you make your document or your page to have columns in Microsoft Word? Still under page layout, still under page layout, you see columns. Under page layout, you see columns. You click on it. One column, two columns, three columns, left and right column, as you want it to be. Let's assume we want three columns. You select it. Now look at the ruler here. You divide it. This is the first column. Here is a space when the document is printed out. This is another column. A space, another column. Have a look as a type. Okay. God is always good to me. He takes care of me all the time. What can you see? Previously, the cursor moves from here down to the end of the page of the line before it comes to the next line. Here, but I've divided into how many columns here? Three columns. So, when you read your newspaper, how do you read? You read a column. When you are done with a column, you come towards to the next column. So, the cursor will continue writing. It will continue writing just on this column. When it is done with this column, what happens? Now it moves to the next column. Can you see? I am a computer educator. Can you see now? So it's, it is now in the next column. When it is done with this column, it moves to the next column. That is why you read your newspaper from here, then you continue with the next column. Here, when the document is printed out, will be a space which you can adjust if you so wish. So here will be a space. So you can have columns, two columns, three columns, and so on. So you can create a columns or create columns in your document. Stay on the page layout. Here, let us look at watermark. The attacks that are printed under, have a look at the sample here, have a look at the sample text that are printed under the normal text to pass out a particular information. Have a look. I click. Okay. Here you can you see confidential. Confidential. Do not copy. So by the time the receiver of that document sees this, it he or she must have been instructed. Please do not photocopy or copy this document. It can be a draft sample you can equally change this you can customize it how you want it to be if i say click on the confidential look at it here so you type on top of it i'm sure you must have seen things like this in your office now you can do it fine where did i get it from Page layout, watermarks. Next, 
I'll have to look at a page border. Page border. Page borders. You can add borders to your page around a page. If you want a particular border around your page of your document, just click on it. From this dialog box displayed, make sure you select page border. Page border. Page border. You can use any of these styles here if you so wish. Can you see? Look at the, the preview here. I, I select this. Microsoft Word show me. Okay. Apply to whole document. If you want it, apply it to only a section of your document. Select this section. Only to the first page. Select only first page. If you want it, apply to the whole document. Select whole document. Then you can select. There are a lot of them here. Oh, you can use the ads. Beautiful ones you can see. Okay, that can be used as borders. Probably, at times you prepare the cover of your CV. You can use any of this. When you are done, what do you do? You say, okay, have a look. Beautiful. Apply it page border from where page layout page border we want to look at line spacing but first I let me take my document back to one color okay fine let's look at line spacing Okay, that is, if you have this, the, 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 the spacing between lines. Let's assume I have, look at this line. My God, this care of me. I worship him all the time he provides for me and my family what about you have a look at this let's look at a spacing the spacing between the first line and this Okay, you create space. You highlight all. Okay. Then right click. Okay. You see paragraph. Paragraph. To highlighting, right click the left button. You can see paragraph. Click on it. Here I have line spacing line spacing line spacing you can say single if i say single and i say okay can you see a little bit closer let's do it again paragraphs i say 1.5 okay can you see the space between the first line and the second one now let's do it again paragraphs multiples okay can you see so you can space your lines after typing right click highlight first of all right click then from this box here drop out commands select paragraphs you can say double depending on how you want it to be then you can say okay the preview here can let you know how it looks like I, I say exactly look at the preview can you watch that multiple can you see the space here now using this 
as what I type. This is what I type. My God takes care of me here. Can you see? Okay. So you can space your lines in that procedure. Then we're going to look at something else again called alignment. Alignment. I have typed this International University of Management. Okay. I want to align it now. Highlight. Go back to your home menu. Then move now to centralize. Can you see the shortcut? Control E. Fine. Click on it. What happened? It has moved to the center. Align. Right. If I click on this, can you see? Left. Center. Right. Justify. Justify everything will be straight. Both from the left and the right if you justify. So you can perform your alignment very easy in Microsoft Word. I'm going to talk about something else again. Let us have, let us think about this. You want to list some items in your document. Then you use what is called bullets. You can right click. Okay. From here, can you see where I am? Go to bullets. You can select any of these to be used. Okay. You can select any of these. Let's assume I want to use this. Fine. I can say rice, for example. Press enter. Can you see? Beans. Yeah. Can you see the bullets now? Okay. Can say water. You can change. It is not necessary you use that only. There are a lot of bulletins you can choose. Go there and select. Okay. So bullets are used to atomize items to list items to atomize items in a document a table consists of columns and rules a table consists of columns and rules where do you get tables from go to insert menu under insert menu you see table so click on it. These are columns. Okay. These are columns. Why these are rules? These are rules. Why these are columns? So if I want a table where I want name, age, address for five students, how many columns do I need? Name address age so i need three columns can you see now i need how many columns three columns for name age address for how many students five i need how many rows five watch how it goes how many have i gotten now? i've gotten four five that is okay click to move to the next column press the tab key tab key from your keyboard okay so you type name to the next column okay then you can fill in the data maybe 15 years just tab okay the name is joy okay joy john erf271111 you can adjust the width of 
your column. If you oh, hey, this is too much. Okay, let me adjust it. Click on the boundary here. You can move. Can you see the way I'm moving it now? Fine. Can you see this one also? You can move it as you want it to be. The height of a rule can equally be adjusted. Just as you have me doing it now. What am I doing? I'm adjusting the height of my roof. You can scroll down to see more. Just look at it here. Okay, just to adjust. You can reduce, not just to increase, as you want it to be. Your work must be good enough, must be presentable. If you feel you need more space for address, then adjust that. If you need more space for name, then adjust as you want it to be. You can press enter here to have additional rules. Can you see the way I'm doing it now? Put your cursor here, the last one. To do what? To have additional rules. You can delete. Oh, I don't want this rule again. Just click on it. After clicking on it, then you right click. Can you see it now? I take it again. Click first with the left button, right click from the auction display. See delete rule. Can you see? Delete rule. Off it goes. I want to delete address. First of all, click on it. Then what next? Right click. What am I going to click here? Is it delete columns or delete rule? Delete columns because this is a column. So you delete column. Address is gone. What if I want it back immediately? Just go back to your keyboard and say undo, which is control Z. Control what? Z. Undo. So undo revises an action that has been done. To insert a table is very simple. As I said, from your insert menu, you see the save table command. In fact, the insert command contains so many things that can be inserted in your document. As you can see, cover page, blank page, pictures, clip art, shapes, and so many things that can be inserted in your document. I want to talk on finally printing a document. The purpose for you to prepare your document is to use it for a particular purpose, which means it must be printed. The soft copy must be printed. What I have on the screen here, what I prepared on the screen, as you can see, is called soft copy. By the time it's printed on paper, it becomes hard copy. It becomes hard copy. If you have it on the screen here, it is soft copy. So how do you print your document? Before you print a document, always preview your documents. Always preview your document. That is, have a look at the document, how it's going to look like. It gives you the opportunity to correct, to format the document if that is necessary. So let's assume I want to print this. First, it's good to preview. Come to your office button, click print. You have print preview. Can you see? Exactly what I have here is what is going to come out from my printer. Exactly what I have here is what is going to come out from my printer. If I'm okay, then I can start printing. If I'm not okay, close the preview. Go back to the document and correct those areas you think are not okay. When you are ready to print the document, come back to the office button, click on print with the shortcut is control P, then click print. 
the print dialog bus comes out. Here, you have a printer name. You have to select the printer that is to be used in printing this document. There might be different printers installed in your computer. So select the printer to be used in printing the document. When you are done with that, come here. If you are going to print all the pages, look at my document here. Remember the status bar? I have what here now? Four of four, which means I'm in page four of how many pages? Four pages. 70 words. So if I'm going to print everything in this document, you select all. If I'm going to print the current document, the current document is the document where the cursor is. Remember the cursor? The black thing that blinks. The current document is where the cursor is. So if I say current document is only going to print that document where the cursor is. Then I have pages. Here you can select. If I say one, it's going to print page one only. If I say one to ten, it's going to print pages one to ten. If I say page two, comma, page four, comma, page seven, comma, page ninety, comma, page one twenty. It's going to print page 2, page 4, page 90, and page 120. Remember, I did not put full stop here. If you put full stop, it's an error. It becomes what is called syntax error. So don't put full stop. Just use comma to separate the pages to be printed. Then come here. Numbers of copies. How many copies do you want? If you want one, fine, leave it. Two copies. Here is going to print page two, two copies. Page four, two copies. Page seven, two copies. Page 90, two copies. If I have one to ten, it's going to print page one to ten, two copies. That is page one, two copies. Page two, two copies. Page three, three cop two copies. Page 4, page 10, two copies. So you can select the number of copies to be printed. When you are done with all those selections, then say OK. If your printer is well connected, there are papers in your printers. What happens? Microsoft will send the document to the printer, then the document starts the printer starts printing the document from the printer.